it's uh, how did it come about? Yes. Um, well, originally I um, was inspired by um, well two things. One is I wanted to do a film that um, featured um, a younger sort of a cast, a younger group of characters. Um, and I was inspired by um, a, fr a friend of mine, um, Q. Allen Broca, who did a series of movies called Eating Out. And um, so my original intention was to sort of create a very um, over-the-top, uh, funny comedy, sex comedy, sort of in that style. But um, as I started, I guess, writing it, it sort of morphed into, you know, more of, I guess, my style, which is more comedy drama. And um, yeah, that's how it happened. And um, how I managed to do... Well, it's if reading the credits, it's r directed by, written by, um, produced by. The songs are sometimes written by, but a lot of them are sung by you? Um, well, I mean, a lot of it is born out of necessity because when you don't have a lot of money, you know, you just can't pay people to do stuff. And so I kind of learned a while back that the best thing to do to sort of, it's not really about creative control, but just to make sure you can get done what you need to get done is to do it yourself. And, um, you know, luckily, I guess I have some abilities in some of these areas. So um, I was able to to do it, um, I got burned really badly on my first film, Punks, because we had a bunch of music from um, uh, a singing group called Sister Sledge, and the distributor that we signed with, they we had negotiated a really good rate for that music, and then they never paid for it, so it was never cleared. So the film sat on the shelf for many years. It just got sort of cleared up last year, and now it's on television in the US now. Um, and I just don't, didn't want that kind of thing to happen again. So I just said, you know, rather than go through any drama with music, I'll just do the whole soundtrack myself. And um, it, it was a lot of work and I'm still pretty exhausted, but it was cool. So, yes, Jussie, um, can you tell us what it was like working with Patrick? It was great. Um, <clears throat> we actually got this film done. So <laughs> it was a blessing. Um, Patrick is very much so, anyone that's ever worked with him would probably say that he's very particular about certain things. Um, because he does put, you know, a lot of, you know, his heart and soul into the projects that he does. But at the same time, I would say that he is, for the most part, an actor's director in the sense that he tells you what he wants, he tells you what he expects, and then he expects you to deliver. If you don't deliver, he will tell you. But um, there is a certain amount of, although he is particular, there is a certain amount of freedom. And I heard the cast of Stud Life yesterday, last night, say that about how much they trusted Campbell. And it's the same thing I really feel like as an actor. I don't know if it's possible to get through something if you don't trust your director, but I think that, I'm sure it is possible, but if you do trust your director, it makes that so much better. It just makes the environment so much better, especially the fact that we were working, this was guerrilla filmmaking, um, you know, and he does that very well. Um, you know, but he did allow us to, he encouraged us to, you know, hang out together, and I think that I think that if if nothing, you see that on the screen that we genuinely, the cast genuinely, we love each other. Um, we just had the premiere in Los Angeles, and everybody came over to my house just to get dressed. You know, and Anthony lives in L.A., Blake lives in L.A., but but everybody, Shanika and Jeffrey came in and they stayed with me, and and we all. He's good at building a sort of family environment. And I don't know if, if I love that so much because I come from a large family, but I think that that was really needed in this, in this um, story and probably in everything that he does because most of the projects that he's done so far have always been about friendship. Um, so yeah, Patrick's dope. And did you have a lot of time for rehearsal? Yes and no, or no and no. Um, we did a lot of readings, but the funny thing is, is that we came in and the first day, I was like, so 
I know what this movie is about, but like what happens in it? Because we had the first day of the reading, we had 43 pages of the script we were given. Um, and each one of us were like, so when are we gonna get the other pages? And Patrick kind of teased us and was like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And what he would constantly say is, just trust me, just trust me, just trust me, just trust me. Um, so we did get time to rehearse, but I would say, if anything, we got time to rehearse as far as building, again, the bond between us, the cast. Um, and then once we got on set, you know, it wasn't that difficult to just go roll with the punches. So we did have, we had, how long did we, did we rehearse and do readings and? For, t for two weeks. Okay, so that's a, that's a nice amount of time. Patrick would have us do the reading and be like, I'm going right, go rehearse. And then we would go and we would rehearse and come back to him and be like, you know, and he would hear it and tell us whether we were good or whether we sucked. And then um, we would go from there. How challenging was it to introduce HIV in the right tone? Um, I mean, I don't find it very challenging. I've been dealing with the subject since my very first film, Punks, and the way I've approached it has always just been to, you know, just keep it real. And, um, you know, having seen HIV dealt with in film and TV in a, in the, in a very stereotypical, maudlin kind of way, that just wasn't the experience that I saw in the real world, so I always wanted to, you know, keep it real and avoid being didactic and preachy, and um, but find interesting ways to connect the message to the audience. So um, I don't know. I just try to always make sure that it's rooted in story and character, and not just so much about facts and information. <laughs> 